Hello and welcome back to the screencast on introducing R. Um, but we're going to, in this screencast, talk a little bit about writing our own functions and we'll start by writing a very, very simple but useful function uh, for, for statistics. Before I do that, uh, I just want to point out in the script I have a small bit of text here uh, about um, different uh, ways you may want to write your code. We've already been using a script editor, so far we're just using the default script editor that comes with uh, Mac OS X. Windows also has a very, very bare-bones editor, but there are many, many editors that you can use. For Linux, most people use gedit with uh, syntax highlighting. Of course, you can use Vim or Emacs. Um, both of those have syntax highlighting for, for R. Uh, and then for people using Windows, there's many options. Uh, one of the most common ones, I believe, is called TinR. And if you look through this, uh, in particular at this website, you can get more information about how to do that and, and, and how to use it. And in general, when we write our script, we not surprisingly save them with the extension .r. But we're going to skip over that. And what we're going to move to is writing our own functions in R. So we've obviously used a number of pre-built functions in R, and there's many of them. And really, like I mentioned, anything uh, with parentheses like that is a call to some sort of function. But we're often going to want to compute something where there isn't a pre-built function, and, and like most programming languages, it's quite straightforward to write your own. Um, and this is generally one of the smart things to do, is to encapsulate your ideas, whether it's just a simple calculation, but something you might use a lot, uh, or something more complex, although, as, as with much uh, programming, it's best to try to encapsulate uh, ideas into individual functions and call those functions as opposed to writing something mammoth. Um, in R, functions have more or less the following format. We're going to have something called a function, and I want you to notice that the syntax highlighting. In general, we'll use camel case. You can use, uh, I'm, I'm pretty flexible here about whether the first letter is uppercase as well. In this case, I just did a lowercase for um, simplicity, but uh, we use some form of camel case. And that function, you of course have an assignment operator. Um, the equivalent of, say, in Python, def is just a call to function here, and then you might have particular input variables, and these are going to be in your parentheses, various arguments, flags, what have you. Um, and then in the curly braces, you will have whatever expression that you're trying to calculate. Now, if you can write this whole function on one li line, you actually don't need to use the curly braces. However, that's really, generally speaking, very hard to read, and so most people write their functions um, across multiple lines. So let's take an example that's, that's actually pretty useful. What we want to do is compute the standard error of the mean, which is one way of, of considering our uncertainty in our estimate. And it's simply put just the standard deviation of our variable uh, divided by the square root of the sample size. And we'll talk much more about why that works and why that, that is a measure of uncertainty, but for the moment, we just want to calculate it. So let's say we have a vector a, and we want to calculate this by hand. So one thing we could do is calculate, we have a, and we can calculate the standard deviation of a, which we just called sd underscore a, and then we can calculate the length of the, the sample size by just length of a, right? So sample size of a is just going to be that. And then we just compute the standard deviation of a divided by the square root of its sample size, of, of the sample size. So in this case, it's just going to be whatever sd of a is, divided by the square root of 9, which is 3, and that whole, that whole quantity will just be equal to 0.64 in this particular case. That's pretty easy, and of course we could easily just do this as one line of code. There's nothing stopping us from doing that. It's quite straightforward. But it turns out we may not just have a vector a, but we may have a vector b as well. And we don't want to have to write the whole thing out over and over and over again. So what do we do? Well, we're going to just write a very simple function called standard error, and it's as simple as this. We have standard error, and our function, our input, is going to be whatever vector, um, and we've left it blank, but what we're inputting, you can define as an argument a default vector to use, so we could say, unless you find something else, you always use a, but we don't need to do that. And then in the curly braces, we just write our function, standard deviation of, of whatever our input vector is, divided by the square root of the length of that vector, so basically the square root of the sample size of it. Um, the way I've written it, the, the function calls an R, the last output produced will by default be the output that the function gives you. However, if there's something specific you want to do, you can actually modify this and actually go, uh, so let's name this, we'll call this 
SE, and if you want to return SE, you can literally just call return SE. Either of those would be equivalent the way it was originally or this. Um, it's often considered preferred to, to actually explicitly write the return uh, uh, call uh, just so people understand exactly what's going to be output. So we do that. And if we want to see what the code looks like, in fact, we can just call the, the function but without parentheses and that will output the, the code for this. Um, and it's fairly easy if we want to change it. If we realize we've made a mistake, we can actually just use the edit function, call edit for the name of that function, and we'll just get a little text window here that we can edit in. However, in this case, what we really want to do is calculate the standard deviation, or standard error, sorry, of the vector a. And here we go, just like we saw before, exactly the same number. But now all we have to do if we want to calculate standard error of b is do the same thing, just put b instead of a, and we get the standard error of that b. And it's that easy. So one of the activities we will do in class is to write our own functions for several simple things. And one example might be, say, the calculation of the coefficient of variation, which is simply just the standard deviation divided by the mean. So it takes some practice to, to learn um, this sort of function-oriented program. This is not true functional programming, although R actually is a functional programming language. But this sort of approach of encapsulating your ideas very simply uh, can make your life a lot easier. And as we will see, um, especially when you write a functions to do really one thing and one thing only, it, it's much easier to debug your problems and even for statistical problems. Um, one thing that most people do then is not surprisingly develop a large uh, excuse me, set of functions that they're going to use over and over again. So if you have a whole set of functions that you know you're going to use for either a particular project or you use for many projects, what you might want to do is collect all of those functions um, in one script and then call them all simultaneously. And the way we would call that, and I'm not actually sure that this link is going to work right now, I think I've changed the name of my source file, um, is you basically just save it as a .r file and you go source for the name of that file now we can give it a shot here. No, no, it's, there's an error because it was, uh, I think I've changed the location for it. Um, but you just uh, go source, and that will contain all of the functions uh, that you've created. And so it's often a very useful thing to do that. Once you know your functions are working, put them in your source file, either for a particular project or cross projects. And once you've got a collection of, of files like this, it then becomes fairly straightforward to, to, if you want to, create a package of your own that you can distribute and share. Um, so, and we will do that as an exercise here. And you can simply save that R file, and then you just go source and put your, your copy or directory here, and that's, that's as much as you need to do. So, again, just to summarize, being able to write functions, whether it's as simple as this or something you know, far more difficult, is an important way of encapsulating your ideas and, and is pretty fundamental to the way most people program in R.